Welcome to At Issue. I'm H. Wayne Wilson. When you go to the ballot box this November 8, several referenda will be on the ballot, especially in Peoria County. First of all, statewide, you may have received this from the state of Illinois, Jesse White's office, the Secretary of State, and it is a statewide uh, referendum, constitutional amendment as a matter of fact, that says, do you want funds generated by transportation services to be used on transportation needs and nothing else. And then in Peoria County, there are three financial questions on the ballot. There's one, a half cent percent sales tax increase uh, for schools. There's one for uh, property tax increase for veterans assistance and for persons with disabilities. And then there's a question of the quarter cent sales tax increase to improve roads in Peoria County. And to discuss that, we'll discuss the other two issues later in the program, but discuss the roads first. Here's Scott Sorrell. Scott is the Peoria County Administrator. Thank you for joining us on At Issue. Thanks, H. So just a, a real brief description of the quarter cent sales tax, if you would, please. Sure, so it's a, a sales tax that would be applied to uh, all purchases except for prescription drugs, groceries, and titled vehicles like cars, motorcycles, and boats. Uh, and the county board has uh, set it to be sunsetted after 15 years. And that's rather unique in that it is sunsetted. Why did you decide to sunset? We did it for a couple of reasons. One, uh, because the county board felt that that was uh, palatable and uh, was something that uh, the voters were very interested in and we wanted to make sure that we just didn't have a tax uh, in perpetuity or forever. It's a, a quarter percent increase in the sales tax which will generate what kind of funds? So that was 25 cents on every $100 purchased, and it would generate, on average, about $4.5 million a year. And the county is going to, you, you have 15 projects you're looking at. You've identified 15 road improvements, right? That's correct. And, but you're going to do them in two different parts. Could you explain to me, the, the, there's going to be a bond issue, and then there's going to be something called pay-as-you-go? Correct. So the first 10 are going to be uh, covered and paid for with a bond issuance that we would do. That bond is a, would be about $35 million and uh, would cover several projects within the city of Peoria. Uh, we have uh, county highways inside the city of Peoria that need to be improved. These are life cycle replacement type of projects. A good example would be the intersection at Allen Road and Willow Knowles Road. Um, and then the other five projects would be pay-as-you-go because the bond payments would be less than that four and a half million dollars so there's a little bit left over each year and we would use that to do a pay-as-you-go approach for those other five and those uh, would include for example um, uh, Park Road uh, which is a county highway that if you go to Cornstalk regularly uh, you use Park Road uh, or uh, if um, you uh, go uh, off of Sterling and head west on, uh, on Richwoods Boulevard. Uh, that's also a county highway that we would look at as a pay-as-you-go type of approach. What kinds of improvements are we talking about? This isn't just patching, is it? No, this is a, these are life cycle replacements for the vast majority of them. Uh, we've been very diligent and very proactive in being preventative in how we maintain our roads, but at some point every road needs to be replaced and we're at that point with several of these roads. I like, liken it to uh, uh, putting a, a roof or reshingling your house. You, every 15, 20 years you have to reshingle your house, but after three or four of those applications you can't put any more layers of shingles on. You've got to tear them all off and start from scratch. So why is it that the county finds itself in this condition? You you've known for some time, you know, these roads need to be repaired, these need to have maintenance, these need to be completely reworked. Why are we in this boat now? But the, we're in this boat now because uh, despite the fact that we've uh, been very proactive in those preventative maintenance measures, and several of these roads have actually uh, outlived their expected useful life, uh, the challenge for us is, is funding. County governments don't have all the tools that other governments, whether it be state or municipal, in terms of raising revenues. We, uh, we have a certain amount of property tax dollars that uh, we levy, and the county board has been very diligent and very transparent about keeping their, property, their portion of the property taxes low. And they also get an allocation of motor fuel tax. Uh, and that allocation is not kept pace with inflation 
In fact, it hasn't changed since 1993, and the dollar value of what you could buy in 1993 compared to today is vastly different. Materials cost more, equipment costs more, and labor costs more. We know that when state roads or interstates are repaired, there's a percentage that the federal government pays or maybe the state government, and that's a high percentage for the federal government. Sometimes it's as much as 90%. Is there a leveraging factor involved here? Where we can, we will be leveraging state and federal dollars, but the vast majority of this work is going to be 100% locally funded, and it's going to put people to work locally as well. And as I look at the map, it looks like a vast majority of the road work is within the city of Peoria limits. That's correct. Uh, when a city grows and annexes land, a township road becomes a city street, but a county highway stays a county highway. Uh, we have a long-standing, multiple-decade-old intergovernmental agreement with the city that says when a, a county highway is uh, improved to an urban standard, then we'll transfer that to the city for perpetual maintenance afterwards. And that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, our goal is to uh, get out of all of our municipalities, just not the city of Peoria. Uh, and an example of that is one of the projects we're looking at is in Princeville. Uh, and then that way we can focus on those county highways that are in the unincorporated areas, which is our core service. So you find yourself as a county doing maintenance on city of Peoria roads, even though the county owns them at the time, but, but there's, there's several in the middle of Peoria that you're maintaining and you'll not have to maintain those after they're that's correct, and I think two really good examples of that would be uh, Lake Avenue, Lake Street and Glen Avenue, both between Knoxville and Sheridan. Those two stretches of roads are county highways, and they were county highways before the Richwoods annexation several decades ago, and they're still county highways today. In fact, Glen Avenue, that stretch, is actually our worst rated road from a pavement condition index. So if I look at the map, you can pretty much draw a north-south line from Princeville all the way south and look at the western half of the county and there are no roads in the western half of the county that are designated for improvement with this tax increase. Does it concern you that half of the, geographically speaking, half of the county is not taken care of? It, it's certainly a concern, but we didn't look at geography when we developed which projects we were going to try and to address. We looked at, uh, from a pavement condition index, uh, which roads were our worst in combination with average daily traffic volumes, so traffic counts, uh, and then the board's stated philosophy of trying to extract uh, ourselves from all the municipalities that we have county highways in. And we have county highways in just about every municipality in the county. If this referendum fails, what is next for roads for Peoria County? It's going to be an interesting challenge for us. We have a finite amount of resources and those costs continue to go up. Where we can, we'll continue to aggressively pursue both state and federal funding opportunities. We've been pretty good at that in the past, uh, but those dollars aren't there as much as they used to be. Uh, and the end result most likely is going to be that the county portion of the highway network, which is 17% of the roads in Peoria County, are going to continue to deteriorate. There are three ballot questions asking for an increase in taxes. Two of them are sales tax increases. One is a advisory referendum for a, a property tax increase. Does it concern you that there are three questions asking for more money in Peoria County and the road question might lose because you're asking for too much money? Ballot fatigue is, ash and is a real concern for us. Uh, we are very transparent about our fiscal conservatism at Peoria County and the board's actions up to this point. Uh, but to have three questions on the ballot, two that we put on the ballot, is, is a concern. Um, we're hopeful that we'll do our job in educating the voters about our issues and uh, the voters will make their decision on election day. Scott Sorrell, Peoria County Administrator, thank you for the update on the tax referendum for county roads. We appreciate it. We'll be back in just a moment with a look at taxes for schools. I'm joined now by Andrea Totora. She's the campaign manager for the Friends of Peoria County Schools. She's here to discuss the issue of the schools facility sales tax increase request that's on the ballot. Thank you for joining us. Could you just real briefly define what this request is? Yes, this is a half percent sales tax 
for schools and it can only be used for making improvements to school buildings. And if voters go to the ballot box and say, this sounds familiar, it was on the ballot two years ago, but a little different. It was. It was on the ballot in March of 2014, and at that time it was a 1% sales tax. This time we've cut that request in half. And how much money will this raise? It will raise $9 million a year to be shared among all school districts in Peoria County. That's There's 20 school districts that have students in Peoria County. That's right. District 150 being the largest of those. Yes. They'll get approximately how much? District 150 will get um, a little over $4 million. Dunlap schools will get a little bit more than $1 million, and Illinois Valley schools will get just over 600000 So this is a sales tax increase, but it's not on everything. Right. This sales tax would tax um, retail sales, such as clothing. It would tax meals at a restaurant or fast food meals, gasoline. Um, it would not tax things like everyday purchases such as groceries, your prescription drugs, even big ticket items like buying a car or a truck, farm equipment, that is not taxed. So the proceeds of this, if it is approved, would be used only for facility improvements, not for education, not for transportation. That's correct. So can you give us some examples of a couple of different school districts and if they have already decided what they might use this money for? Yes, uh, Peoria Public Schools has hundreds of projects planned if this passes, including roof repairs, energy efficient lighting and windows, HVAC upgrades to bring air conditioning to schools that don't have it, as well as improve air quality, parking lot improvements, and um, building maintenance such as tuck pointing, uh, things that don't sound exciting but are really important to the life of a building. Dunlap wants to increase its learning space and make, they have buildings that also need improvements. Wilder Waite is their oldest school. That building needs some care and Illinois Valley will reduce its property taxes if this passes and then continue to make building pro improvements that they have started. And you mentioned the property tax reduction. The law allows, if the tax is approved by voters, to either improve facilities or to reduce the property tax. Uh, is Chillicothe the only one that you are aware of that has actually suggested that they will reduce the property tax rate? Yes, right now they're the only ones saying that they will promise to reduce their property tax rates. And you mentioned air conditioning. There are those who would suggest to you that st the, just a couple of weeks during the school year that air conditioning is necessary. And I know that District 150 has 13 schools that are not air conditioned. So if they put money into air conditioning, what's the benefit when you consider the short time frame in which air conditioning would be used? We have heard that concern a lot. And while many of us went to school without air conditioning, that was back when we could keep doors open and first floor windows open. And schools can't do that today because of security reasons. So putting in proper HVAC allows for comfortable, uh, cooling and heating in a building and it also improves air quality. You know if you're in a building and it's 90 degrees outside you're in one of the older school buildings in our county it could be upwards of 100 degrees inside. If the roof is if it has rained that week and the roof is leaking you could be looking at mold buildup and all other kinds of things uh, impacting air quality. And there have been many studies that show a direct correlation between the environment inside a building and student achievement and in fact studies do show that there is a 17 percent achievement gap between students who attend school in a modernized building versus those who are in a building that's considered inadequate. Are these funds to the best of your knowledge in all the districts used for repairs as opposed to new construction or will be there some new, new construction in some districts? There may be some new construction in districts such as building additions. Um, Dunlap does need more space so they may be doing some new construction. Uh, Peoria Public Schools mostly it will be for building repairs and maintenance. And again this can't be used for salaries, no, educational, uh, transportation? Nope. Okay. So just, just buildings and uh, infrastructure and uh, in the case of uh, Chillicothe, reduction in the property tax rate. Yes. 
Uh, mentioning the property tax, there are three requests for increases in funds on the Peoria County ballot this November 8th. One of them is an increase for schools, another is a quarter percent sales tax increase for roads, and then there is a, an advisory referendum to raise the property tax rate for veterans assistance. Is there a concern in your mind that this may be the wrong timing, that we're asking voters to approve three different tax hikes all in one ballot? Sales taxes can always be a tough sell. Um, the schools are asking for this half percent sales tax now because it's desperately needed. The schools in our county are not receiving the funds that they are supposed to receive from the state because of the state budget situation and because of the way our state funds schools. Schools are mostly funded right now by property taxes, as you've mentioned. But in certain cities, schools do not actually receive all of the property taxes that they should because cities have created what are called TIF districts. These tax increment financing districts provide incentives for businesses to locate in these areas. But when, they, when that happens, schools do not get the property taxes that they might normally get if a TIF district were not there. Um, in the two years since Peoria County has last tried for this sales tax, the needs have increased. Buildings continue to fall apart if we don't take care of them. And just as we need to maintain our roads, we need to maintain our school buildings. We've got 27,700 children attending school in our public schools, not to mention all of the teachers and other staff that work in them. Uh, just for clarification for the audience's benefit, uh, TIF districts, tax increment financing, the taxes for non-municipal districts like the park district, the school district, are frozen at the current level and then no increase for the life of the TIF district, which can be 23 years. Right. Uh, what happens, and I know there are 20 different districts that are impacted, but in general, what happens if this fails? If this fails, uh, I'm, I know that the districts will do everything they can to make the most out of the money that they have and can access, but if it fails, districts at some point will have no other choice but to raise property taxes, because that's the only way that they can get money right now. And you do not, I mean, personally, you do not see the state stepping in and saying, no, we'll start helping. I would love to see that happen. Um, I hope that our elected leaders are working towards that, but uh, I haven't seen any strong indications that that's going to happen in the immediate future. And how many, th this has been on the ballot in numerous counties. Yes. How many have passed, how many have failed? 39 counties in Illinois have passed this, so districts in those counties are now receiving revenue from their sales taxes. And t I believe it's 28 districts have attempted to pass a sales tax and it has failed. Including Peoria County one time in 2014. Correct. Andrea Totora, thank you so much for joining us on Ad Issue. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment with a look at the advisory referendum for veterans assistance. I'm joined now by Alan Mayer. He represents the Peoria County Board for District 6 and just for geographical identification, Alan, you are I-74 on the west and south? And correct, and then up to about Sheridan Village on the north and east, roughly. And for the purposes of this conversation, you're the chair of the Ways and Means Committee, which basically handles the budget, the finances of Peoria County. Uh, a lot of the tax cycle issues, uh, in particular for this, uh, we also are the liaison with the Veterans Assistance Commission. And that's what we're going to discuss for the next several minutes is a, a a advisory referendum yes. to raise the property tax. The first two segments were about the sales tax. This one's the, the property tax. Describe the requested increase. Certainly, glad to H. So what we're doing is, is the county board is coming forward to the voters of Peoria County to ask permission uh, to raise property taxes, a small amount for two very specific programs. We could have simply increased these levies without voter referendum, but uh, we wanted to get the input of the folks that put us on the board. Uh, we think that that's important uh, for proper representation. Uh, the two segments, it's uh, one half cent for the Veterans Assistance Commission 
and then a cent, uh, and this is again per $100 in assessed value for the uh, Board of Care and Treatment for uh, Persons with Developmental Disabilities. Basically, we're talking about assistance for veterans in our community and the developmentally disabled. What kind of assistance? Because everyone's familiar with the Veterans Administration. This right. is different. This is. So uh, with the Veterans Assistance Commission, uh, there is a small portion of their budget, which is currently just around a quarter of a million dollars, uh, that goes towards one-time small grants, assistance with a utility bill, that sort of thing. But most of what our staff does nowadays is assist veterans in the community with all that paperwork that they have to fill out in order to claim the benefits that they are legally entitled to from the Veterans Administration. Uh, we have been seeing double-digit growth in the number of veterans that are coming forward and requesting this assistance. And I mentioned that we have about a quarter of a million dollar budget our staff is able to then bring back in, as a result of their assistance, $5 million is our estimate for this year, meaning that we get about a 20 to 1 return on investment for what we spend in staff and services with the Veterans Assistance Commission. So the increase, if approved, and the county board then acts, right. it will I increase how much? It, so we would go from about a quarter of a million dollar levy to about a $400,000 levy. Uh, and those funds would be used to expand the number of staff and to work on outreach, especially to younger veterans who may not be aware of the services that they're entitled to uh, being a veteran in Peoria County. Um, part of the problem is that, as I mentioned, we've been having double-digit uh, growth. So, for instance, in um, uh, 2014, we assisted with about 40,000 different applications and, and pieces of paperwork with the VA. That went up to 60,000 in 2015, and it is well on its way to being much more than that in 2016. Um, though the funds would be used to hire additional staff because right now uh, the staff is having to schedule appointments weeks or even months out just because there's such increased demand. That's the one half cent. That's the Then one there's half. a full cent. Uh, advisory referendum for the Care and Treatment Board. What is that? Sure, and you won't see the words Care and Treatment Board, but you'll see it, it mentioned uh, for persons with developmental disabilities. So the Care and Treatment Board actually has zero staff. Uh, every dollar that we raise there is going to be going in the form of grants to service providers here in Peoria County. Uh, folks that you know, folks that you uh, respect and have probably donated money to, Epic, that used to be called Park, the Community Workshop, Easter Seals, Camp Big Sky are some of the recipients in past years. Um, what's, these are also some of the folks who um, have suffered the most, quite frankly, because of the dysfunction over the state budget in Springfield. Uh, their payments for Medicaid services, uh, other grants from the state have been delayed or cut. Um, what we're seeking by this additional one cent in property taxes is to increase the amount that we're giving in grants. And it actually will bring us back up to uh, the levy that we used to have several years back in 2010, 2011. Um, we should also, for context, say that this would increase it from a little less than a penny to a little less than two cents. For comparison, Woodford County levies three cents and Tazewell County levy, or levies uh, 2.2 cents. So we'd be right in line with uh, neighboring counties. This is advisory. Yes. If it fails, might the county, and I know you're just one of 18 on right. the board, but might the county say we're going to raise it anyway because of the federal funds that will be benefit coming in? And well, so uh, let, let me say this. Uh, I think that there is a strong support for these programs on the county board. I think there is a very strong support for this out in the public. Uh, I think this is an advisory referendum not because we're worried about what the public thinks of these programs. They're both very popular. I think this is on the ballot because before we raise property taxes, we want folks out there to know why we're raising taxes and where the funds are going to go. And I should mention that this isn't just um, the general purpose raising of the tax rate. These are separate levies for the Veterans Assistance Commission and for the Board of Care and Treatment. 
So this is not something where we would be able to raise these taxes and then sweep it off uh, to use it for administrator salaries or something else. But if, if, but if the public says no by a significant margin, not 50, 149, but mm -hmm. let's say 60, 40, your opinion as to what the next step might be? I, I, I Well, I highly doubt that would happen, but if it did, then the voters would have spoken. And I think that part of our job is to represent the people that elect us. And if they felt that strongly about that, I think a lot of the board would take that into consideration when we're putting together our budget for next year. Alan Mayer of the Peoria County Board, thank you so much for joining us on that issue. We appreciate it. Thank you, H. My pleasure. And it is now up to you to go to the ballot box and cast your ballot. I hope you're more informed about the three tax issues that face Peoria County residents. Next week, we'll be back with another edition of that issue, this time looking at issues affecting the Latino community.